Rising above the waters of Resurrection Bay just south of Seward, Canes Head State Recreation Area offers stunning beachfronts, panoramic alpine outlooks, coastal temperate rainforests, and the remains of an abandoned World War II era military base. That's a lot to take in, but I can sum it all up for you. It's awesome. Getting to Canes Head isn't a simple walk in the park, but put in the effort and you'll find one of the best state parks in Alaska. Set aside at least two full days if you want to see some of the highlights, but you'll need at least three or more days if you want to see it all. You'll need your standard backpacking loadout. Don't skimp on rainwear. You can skip your bear canister since the campsites have food lockers, but it's probably a good idea to bring your bear spray. Make sure to bring a strong flashlight if you want to explore the fort. But before you head out, make sure you always tell someone where you're going and when you'll be back. More than anything though, you'll have to bring a plan. Getting to Kane's Head requires a beach walk, which is only safe to hike in tides of three feet or less. The trail has areas with plenty of back shore, so you don't have to worry about being swept away if you plan ahead. But several horns jutting out into the bay are only safe to pass at these low tides. There's a low tide every 12 hours, but not every tide is low enough to get around. You'll want to be on the trail two hours before low tide, since you want to reach the pinch points at the right time. Stick to the schedule and keep a tide table handy. It's possible to get stuck between pinch points, so keep a steady pace if you like to stay dry. If the tide comes in, you'll either have to wait around or wait it out. Do not try to climb over these rocks. They are unbelievably slick. To hike in, your trailhead is Lowell Point State Recreation Site. Just under two miles in, you'll reach Tonsina Point Campground. A perfect place to wait out the tides. The next three and a half miles cross a rocky black shale beach and our tidal pinch points. Along the beach, you'll pass the Tonsina, Callisto, and Derby Cove public use cabins. After that, it's a short and steep forest hike up and over to North Beach. The North Beach has everything you need to set up base camp with nearby outhouses, fresh water, a picnic shelter, and food lockers. Once you're at North Beach, you've made it. A number of interconnecting trails give you access to the different parts of the park, and these hikes can be combined or done one at a time. These mileages may look short, but if you try to do it all in a day, you might not find it very fun. First, we're reporting to Fort McGilvery. The fort's origins trace back to World War II and the fortification of the Pacific Theater. This area's strategic value to Resurrection Bay was identified by the Army in the early 1940s. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor by the Empire of Japan, Seward's status as a major supply hub for the territory, as well as the bombing of Dutch Harbor and the invasion of Attu Island, made defense of Resurrection Bay a priority. Uh, thanks. I'll take it from here. Construction efforts were often stifled by the difficult conditions, but by December of 1942, troops arriving at North Beach would find a fully operational fort with four barracks and a multitude of support buildings, all hidden below a canopy of spruce forest. Fort McGilvery was built to house troops for the six inch fixed gun emplacements at Kane's Head and Rocky Point. Over the two years the fort was active, it housed 2,000 soldiers. By 1944, the threat to the territory had subsided and the fort was abandoned. Though Seward was never attacked and the guns at Kane's head never fired at the enemy, the fort and its bunkers are a concrete reminder of World War II's effects on Alaska's history. Thanks, Caitlin. That was very informative. Bring a strong flashlight with you and feel free to explore where you can. But do not take any artifacts or souvenirs with you. Removing items damages the experience for future users. And it's 100% illegal. If you don't feel like heading back to camp quite yet, the hike down to South Beach is just a mile and a half from the junction. But the terrain around here doesn't let you off easy. Even though we're only dropping from 400 feet elevation down to sea level, the round trip gain is over 1,100 feet. But once you get down to the beach, it'll be worth your while. This black sand beach is beautiful, but definitely not the place to take a swim. 
The rough surf also makes this a bad landing spot for kayakers and boats. But if you feel like falling asleep to the crashing waves, the nearby campsite is a tactical choice. If you're heading back towards North Beach, you have two options. You can take the long route up and over past the Alpine Junction, or you can go back the way you came, which is a great option. We took the hard way, so we may as well show you. The South Beach to Alpine Junction Trail is easy to see on the map, but it can be pretty hard to find on the ground. The route, we'll call it, winds over an unnamed creek, we'll call it. Although there are intermittent trail markers along the way, the paths you can find are difficult to follow in the rampant growth, making it pretty easy to find yourself in pure bushwhacking mayhem. The temperate coastal rainforest landscape, complete with skunk cabbage and Sitka spruce, looks like a little slice of southeast Alaska and feels just as remote. And if it's been pouring, which we were lucky enough to experience, so many waterfalls. I don't even think they bother naming them. There's just a whole bunch. Still, if you're up to the challenge and feeling adventurous, there's certainly worse places to get just a little bit lost. But thankfully for those headed to the Alpine Trail, the trail from the north was much easier for Miles and I to follow. If you're hoping to hike this trail, and I sincerely hope you do, plan on spending the day with it. With nearly 2,000 feet of gain over three miles, getting to the top isn't easy. But with sweeping overviews of Resurrection Bay and miles of high tundra to explore, it's a huge change of pace from the forest canopy. The best route from the North Beach is the most direct. The junction to the trail is about a half mile from North Beach, and from there it's a steady and scenic climb through the trees. Once you reach the junction, the trail climbs a series of switchbacks up and above the tree line, where all that hiking really starts to pay off. Once past the tree line, the trail winds along a ridge beneath Callisto Peak. And then disappears under the rolling tundra. This open landscape soaks in an amazing panoramic view of Resurrection Bay, Kane's Head, and Seward, only eight miles away, but feeling much, much more distant. We lucked out on the weather, meaning we had plenty of landmarks to orient ourselves, but this area can get socked in in a hurry. So keep a compass handy in your kit if you go exploring. It's not hard to get turned around in these small gullies. The beaten path ends at the beginning of the tundra, and after that, how far you want to go is up to you. Hiking from the beach through temperate rainforest and onto tundra is an experience even this sourdough was impressed by. And the perfect capstone to our adventures. When you get back to cell service, let us know how you did. Hashtag AK State Parks and follow us on social media for more tips and trips. Stay tuned. <laughs>